This episode of Distraction is sponsored by Landmark College in Putney, Vermont, home of the Landmark College Institute for Research and Training, working to discover innovative strategies and practices to improve teaching and learning in the field of learning disabilities. Learn more at lcdistraction.org. Landmark College. We teach differently. The other empowering message that we can give them is that there is value in making mistakes. Yes. That even when they make mistakes, they're growing the, their brain, and that is part of the process. We tell them there's the idea of productive struggle, and we tell them that if they are feeling slightly uncomfortable with the material, then that is kind of the sweet point where they need to be when we're introducing material to them. That's a sign to them that their brain is growing, Mm -hmm. and that's a good sign. Hello, this is Dr. Ned Hallowell, and welcome to Distraction. Today, I have two very special guests that I met by accident. A few uh, weeks ago, I was out in Chicago at the Central States Independent School Conference. It's a huge conference, many, many talks. And um, I gave a talk, but then I had time to wander into other people's talks, which is really fun for me. I love when I can become the consumer instead of the, uh, you know, the provider. And so I looked at this vast array of, of possibilities, and they were all juicy, low-hanging fruit. And I thought, which one should I go into? And uh, I settled on this presentation by two women I'd never heard of, and uh, but they were they were third grade teachers, which gave them instant credibility, in my opinion. Teachers, just particularly third grade teachers, they just they don't lie, and they work hard. And for them to stand up and give a presentation, I just knew it would be good, and I was right. Uh, They're both teachers at the Hathaway Brown School, which is like the best school in town in in Cleveland, Shaker Heights. And um, these two teachers represent that school very well. They were were articulate, smart, but funny, humble, flexible, curious. They were were just phenomenal. They gave a fantastic – and, you know, I have ADD, so I can't sit through a presentation – for much more than six minutes unless it really grabs me. And this one really grabbed me. They were talking about the growth mindset, which most of you have heard of, but some of you haven't, and I'll leave it to them to explain it from there. But these days, you know, it's one of the great advances in psychology, Carol Dweck's uh, uh, work on the growth mindset. But uh, a lot of people have heard of it and and they kind of know what it means. But then how do you use it? That's the real question. And that's the question I invited these two wonderful women to talk with me. So I'm just going to hand it over to them, Dara Parsons and Becky Klein. Dara Parsons and Becky Klein. Remember those names. And and they're at the Hathaway Brown School in Shaker Heights, Ohio. Welcome to Distraction. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, thank you. We were so excited to have you stumble into our presentation. <laughs> uh, it was quite exciting for us and to see your presentations as well. So, um, so I've, I'm, as you said, a third grade teacher here at Hathaway Brown School. I'm Dara. Mm-hmm. And um, this is my fourth year teaching here. Um, I've been a parent here a while. I have a 13-year-old and a, a 10-year-old. So Becky and I started working together four years ago. We both were able to come into third grade at the same time. So it was a really nice way to build our curriculum together. Mm, mm. Hello, and I'm Becky Klein, and I've been teaching at Halfway Brown for seven years now and have uh, two daughters both in college. Wonderful, wonderful. So tell us, jargon-free, what is this growth mindset and how does a teacher or a parent use it? Well, I would say just very simply, you know, the growth mindset is believing that you can develop your own abilities, that you're not born with a set a set amount of abilities, that that's all you get and uh, you can't change it. With the growth mindset, you can develop into, you know, your talent and your abilities. You're not born a math person or a 
writer that you, if with hard work and with good mentoring from teachers that you can, you know, achieve at high levels. And then the opposite of that would be the fixed mindset where you believe your qualities are just set in stone and you get what you get. And um, there isn't a whole lot you can do in that way. Or sort of the flip side of it is you have a fixed mindset and you think you're great at everything and that you don't need to get any better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we've all heard that it, it helps if you think you can do something. But Carol Dweck pretty much proved that it's true, right? Right. She had a really um, great experiment where she had two groups of students and gave them this the same challenging task but praised one set for how hard they worked and the other how smart they were and when they were presented with other challenges after that that the they were presented with um, a really hard task that was almost impossible to complete and the kids that were praised on their process and their hard work wound up taking on that challenge more and versus the group that was praised just on how smart they were, were very discouraged by it. And when they were given a third task that was very similar to the first task that they completed, they, both groups, or the, the group that had the, uh, that were praised for being smart were, did significantly, did significantly worse than they did on the first try because they had been, you know, discouraged and thought that they just had sort of lost, lost their ability to do these tasks. Whereas the, group that uh, were praised on their hard work and the way they work together actually did better than they did on the first task. So it so, was kind of this eye-opening experience. So it's sort of like the old saying, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So if that's true, and uh, now we can say it's been proven to be true, how do you as a teacher or by extrapolation as a parent uh, instill that in your, your students or your children? Well, uh, I would say about three years ago when Darren and I really started following the ideas of Carol Dweck and reading her book, Mindset, we realized that even before we really wanted to bring this exciting message to our students, uh, we also realized to have them buy in to this idea. We wanted to show them uh, and explain to our third graders some of the new brain research that had precipitated this whole Um, idea of mindset. Mm -hmm. And so we actually uh, created a what we labeled as a social studies unit at the beginning of our school year to teach the kids about growth mindset. And we start that with a couple sessions on teaching them about the brain. We also uh, have been studying with Joe Bowler. We went out to her course out at Stanford, and she has some fantastic resources for kids uh, to explain how the brain works through videos. And so we explained to our third graders how the, this brain research that has been, we, use, we cite them a couple of uh, two major studies that even our third graders find really fascinating. One about the taxi cab driver test in London, and then another study about a, a little girl here, here in the United States who Uh, surgically had half her brain removed and was able to experience almost a full recovery. And that really captures uh, their interest. Tell us about the taxi cab study. That is a study where London taxi cab drivers are required to take a two-year course before they can take a test to be certified as a cab driver in London. And they're required to memorize over 25,000 routes in and, in and around the city of London. And researchers in the early 2000s took imagery of their brain before the test and before the course, the two-year course and after the two-year course, and they determined that they, their brain, they could measure um, that their brain experienced significant growth during that time period. And it was really one of the first studies that they could prove through this imagery of what they suspected that even as adults, people can grow their brain. So our message to our students is that they are born with a brain, but it acts, their brain is not set. It's very much like a muscle that Mm -hmm. they can grow and strengthen. And we use analogies for the kids, much like how they become better in their sport or their dance or their music through practice. 
that through practice here at school, they can grow their brain. Mm, mm. And it's true. It's, it's, that's it's such good news. It's absolutely true. Yeah. yeah. It's no secret that we've all been through very challenging times recently and the frustration of changes in our daily lives for almost everybody. When you need help to cope with the day-to-day, it's important to reach out to the professionals at BetterHelp who will personally work with you to get back on track, achieving your goals, and bring back that daily fulfillment you so richly deserve. BetterHelp, a distraction podcast sponsor, will help you on the road to regain confidence, satisfaction, and fulfillment in your everyday life. The professionals at BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist who will give you the help you need to get back on track. They're convenient, affordable, and anything you share is always confidential. As a Distraction Podcast listener, save 10%. Just go to our sponsor, BetterHelp, at betterhelp.com slash distraction. BetterHelp is there to help you when you need it most. Again, save 10% and go to betterhelp.com slash distraction and get back on track with BetterHelp. Other, other things you do with your students? Well, w- once we have them buy into and understand some of the brain research, yeah. then uh, we educate them on the idea, the concept of a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. Mm-hmm. And there's some wonderful books out there that we use with our age group that I would say is appropriate for um, grades three through five. And then there is also some excellent resources for middle school and high school students as well that I haven't personally experienced, but some of the resources are actually offered on Carol Dweck's website that she, that she offers. Okay. And I have to say they really do take to the message. It's a very empowering message for that age group where they're, you know, the third grade being that transition from kind of that K through two and entering into those higher level grades, it's that they have control of their learning. It's not just teachers standing there and giving them information, but that they can work hard and they can, you know, grow their brain. And it's something that they definitely take to heart. It's something that when my daughter was in Becky's class, I've both my daughters, Lillian and Juliet, have always wanted me to French braid their hair. And it's something that I'm not, I had never tried. I said, I can't do it. And my third grader after she had Becky in class, you know, came up to me and said, mom, I want you to French braid my hair. And I said, I can't, it's just, I just can't do it. It's not something I can do. I'm just not good at those things. And she said, well, that's a fixed mindset. And you taught us about <laughs> fixed and growth mindset. So you need to grow your brain. So we watched a lot of YouTube braiding videos and after, you know, and she would tell me, mom, your brain's growing. Whenever I would get frustrated, she said, that's you're challenging yourself. You're growing your brain. And now I, I can say she has beautiful French braids mm-hmm. almost is, every day at school. That so. is such a great story where, where she <laughs> says, mom, that's not very, that's not very growth mindset. Of I know. I felt like I was set up a little bit. <laughs> and you learned how to do it. I learned and I, ha- I did. And I use it every year with my students. I say, you know, girls, don't say you can't do something. You know, you can learn, you can try. And I tell them the story. And I, I said, we don't just tell you these things. You know, we believe in them and we go through the same thing as adults. It's not, you don't get to a point in your life where you're just, you say, I'm done. That's it. I'm done, you know, learning and growing. So, so it's like the kid who says, I'm, I'm bad at math or... Exactly. Right. Or, or I can't hit a baseball. Yes. It? So it's not just academic stuff, right? No, not at all. I think it's, you know, we, you know, we're lucky at Hathaway Brown to have many different offerings for the kids and many different pathways they can take. And, you know, we definitely encourage the girls to try lots of different things. And we don't want them to sort of opt out of something, not try something because they don't think they're a music person or they don't think they're, you know, a language person or a math person, you know, whichever pursuit they want. They, we want them to try it because, you know, that they can get better. And it's not to say they're going to become world famous musicians or athletes or actresses, but that they can get better themselves. You know, right. that, that they can learn and grow and develop. Yeah, no, it, it's so empowering. It's such a – and the fact that it's true, it's not just a slogan. 
Right. You know, the, the other empowering message that we can give them is that there is value in making mistakes. Yes. That even when they make mistakes, they're growing the, their brain, and that is part of the process. There's value in that. We even use the word, we tell them there's the idea of productive struggle. And because we have a pretty challenging curriculum in third grade, and we tell them that at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. And we tell them that if they are feeling slightly uncomfortable with the material, then that is kind of the sweet point where they need to be when we're introducing material to them. That's a sign to them that their brain is growing, Mm -hmm. and that's a good sign. We tell them we don't want them to always feel that way, that eventually we want them to be able to master the material so we can move on to something new, Mm -hmm. Um, but to get comfortable with that. And we even hear the girls telling each other, don't get frustrated, your brain's growing. Oh, that's so great. And it's sort of like you don't want to lift weights that are too light for you. Right. And that's, we, we explain that too, that while it might seem like doing math sheets that are so easy for you, you don't, you know, you can get them done quickly might seem fun for a little bit, but that's not, you're not, you're not learning, you're not growing, you're not getting better so that you do need to challenge yourself, that you shouldn't just stay at one level and just do it because, you know, it's easy. That, that doesn't help you. That doesn't grow your brain. And and do they begin to buy into that? Do they begin to say, okay, bring it on? Yes, they do. And that's kind of, that's also where the sports analogy or music or dance analogy helps because we tell them, you know, you wouldn't sign up for tennis lessons and expect your coach after the first lesson to put you in the championship tournament. Mm -hmm. You have to work up to that. You have to build up to that. But they do take on a much more, their, their attitude towards challenges are different and they are willing to stick with their endurance and to stick with math problems Mm -hmm. or even writing. Uh, We have a pretty rigorous writing program in third grade and up through, you know, K through two, it's very developmentally appropriate that they're encouraged by their writing. You know, their teachers are telling them they come up with great ideas. Mm -hmm. They're really expressing themselves. But we find by the time they get to third grade, we really need to structure that writing a little bit more. And we're in a position where we have to tell them that's not quite right or you're not there yet. And we tell them, like, you're not, when you get your writing back, there's going to be a lot of suggestions and ideas of how to improve. And sometimes that's hard for them to hear. But with the introduction of this growth mindset, they're much more receptive. They take those suggestions in a much different way. They're appreciative of it because they see it's going to help them get to the, go- the goal of where we want them to be by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Relationships take work. A lot of us will drop anything to go help someone we care about and treat them well. But how often do we give ourselves the same treatment? This month, our sponsor, BetterHelp Online Therapy, wants to remind you to take care of your most important relationship the one you have with yourself. BetterHelp Online Therapy offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. BetterHelp is easy, affordable, and it can be life-changing. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Distraction Podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash distraction don't wait change things for the better go to better h-e-l-p dot com slash distraction now you'll be glad you did we definitely give them the message that we're here we're it's our job to teach them the things they need to learn it's we don't expect them to get magically to the end of being able to write beautiful paragraphs without our mentoring, without our feedback, without our help. I think there are times where a growth mindset is just sort of thrown out there, that it's try hard, work hard, but there has to be that mentoring piece yes. of, and that scaffolding that they can't do it on their own. And I think for parents or teachers, it's important to realize the role that you have in cultivating that growth mindset, that it's not just on the children. It's not just whether they have a growth or fixed mindset and and that determines their, how well they're going to learn something, but that 
that it's our job as the adult in their life to help get them there. And I think it, at least in our classroom, it's, it's a better buy-in when, you know, we explain, we show them a rubric or we sh- give them a, a learning objective we would like them to accomplish and say, it's my job to get you from, you know, where you are now to where you, we would like you to be. And it's a partnership. I'm going to give you the information. I'm going to give you the feedback and you need to, you know, work hard and develop your skills along with that. It's like you'll give them the tools and they do the work. Right. It's not just whether or not they have a fixed or growth mindset. Right. And that, that determines it, but that there is that, there is a role for the teacher in the curriculum, you know, also giving them the curriculum that you're developing needs to welcome the opportunity to use a growth mindset. Uh, one of the things I liked so much about your talk was you, you stress the importance of challenging and, and, you know, always, uh, one of the best things that ever happened to me was in the 12th grade, my 12th grade English teacher, I handed in a three-page story in September, and he handed it back and said, why don't you turn this into a novel? And I thought, holy moly, I, I, knew, I knew he was a hard teacher. I didn't know I had to write a novel. <laughs> but I, but I, was, I was secretly flattered because I was the only kid mm-hmm. he challenged to do that. And lo and behold, by the end of the year, I'd written a novel. It won the Senior English Prize. It, and, but more than that, it got me to prove to myself that I could do something I would have thought was impossible. And I yes. think that, ty- you know, that definitely is true, especially for students that are, you know, we have obviously a spectrum of, of students and where they fall and whether they have learning disabilities or, you know, ADHD. This is a, it's a very powerful thing for them that they, it's yes. that giving them these messages that we have high expectations for everyone. Yes. And, and, and that we, you know, you, when we, we give them a lot of one-on-one feedback and talking mm-hmm. and saying, you know, I believe in you. I, I, you, you can do this, yep. you know, are you, are you going to work with me to, to get this done? And they're, they're so sometimes grateful to have someone there that, that does think they can do it. And it's not just work hard. That's all we really expect from you is to work hard, but not just work hard, but also achieve. Right. Right. And, and then you get them to prove to themselves they can do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that, that's so – and I bet it's so important to get this message or, or this – it's not a message. It's an experience because they're not just learning a message. They're, they're developing an experience they, to get it in their young. You Absolutely. Know, third grade. Wow. And they're very receptive to it. I, you know, I can imagine that initially some people may think, well, that's, that seems kind of young to introduce that concept or explain some brain research to them. But they find it fascinating and – Third grade students are such an enthusiastic bunch that they and so willing to learn and interested in so many things. It's just a very, it's a excellent time to introduce the concept to them. So third grade, it, it's uh, and and you can just see them light up. I bet you know. Absolutely, they, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. what makes teaching so fun. Yeah. So you take a kid at the beginning of third grade who maybe thinks you know he or she can't do much. Well, you have all girls, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so a girl who thinks she she can't do much, whatever it might happen to be, by the end of the year, she's beaming. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Because of what she's done, I mean, she's achieved. Right, and you're so you're really fostering that self motivation. Yes. You know, we don't really. I mean, it's it's especially with third graders. A lot of times, they're very they want to please their teacher or please right. their parents, which is which is very endearing. But right. the ultimate goal is for them to be self-motivated so that they're proud of their work right. and that they it's an internal drive not an not an external one. Yes, and the and the joy of achieving something that's difficult. Exactly. Yeah. I mean if that if we could instill that our our job is done. Yeah. Because then they're they're they have endless opportunities to achieve at that point. They're, they're set for life, in, in my opinion. I mean, that when you've experienced that, when you've felt it and done it, God, you're unstoppable. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we want for our girls. Oh, that's wonderful. I knew I loved you guys listening to you, and <laughs> I, I love you once again. I mean, this is just, it's so freeing, empowering, and it, you know, Things like uh, IQ or height or family income or all of those things, you know, don't matter. What matters is the, you know, that you take on a challenge and rise to it and, uh, you know, you'll discover you can do more than you ever thought. Absolutely. And it's contagious. I think it, you know, once you feel it in one area, then it 
spills over into other things. Yeah, boy, you guys are just wonderful. How, if one of our listeners wanted to be in touch with you, I know you're not out in the in the public, but is there? Uh, would you send them to what? How? What would? What should they do? They could certainly contact us by our email. Okay, great. Our school email. We'd be happy to give that on the air. Great. Go ahead. Um, so mine would be uh, B Klein K L I N E at hb dot edu, and mine is the Parsons P A R S O N S at hb dot edu. HB for Hathaway Brown. I'm yes. telling you, listeners, these two women, they know their stuff. They, if you have a, you know, a girl or a boy in <clears throat> elementary school, these two women are, you know, brilliant, and they they get it, and they're in the trenches, and they're so committed. You know, not many teachers are as com- well. Many teachers are committed, but these two women are really wonderful. I, I just I can't thank you enough. Uh, thank you, Dara Parsons and Becky Klein. Thank you for introducing our listeners to the growth mindset in a in a practical way. It's one of the most freeing and empowering concepts to come up in psychology in a long, long time. That, uh, along with neuroplasticity from the neurosciences, you know, we've really proven that as individuals, and there's, there's no age limit to it, that as individuals we can. Uh, learn and grow uh, by applying ourselves and getting the right guidance. This is just terrific. Thank you so, 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 so much. I, I truly very, very grateful to you both. Oh, well, thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks a lot. Have a, have a wonderful holiday season. You thank too. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Weren't they wonderful? I don't know. I, I just uh, I light up when I talk to people who I just know are gifted at what they do, and and these two women are just in the business of uh, helping these kids in such a practical way. These kids will probably forget their third grade teachers, but the impact that these two women will have on these girls in the third grade at Hathaway Brown, once you develop the belief that you can do something and then you prove it to yourself by doing something that you would have thought was impossible, like me writing a novel in my 12th grade year... That stays with you forever. That experience has stayed with me forever. The teacher, Fred Tramalo, stayed with me forever. He's in heaven now. But but if you can get that in, and it's, you know, it's backed up by the fact of neuroplasticity, it's so freeing and empowering. And, and, you know, regardless of your IQ, your education, your age, it just doesn't matter. Uh, The sky's the limit. And and, uh, that's not Tony Robbins, you know, as much as I... Respect Tony Robbins. That's not a motivational talk. It's it's scientific fact, and and uh, it does provide motivation. But uh, and these two women, it's just heartwarming. They're you know they work in the third grade. They're not getting a lot of attention. They're not being paid a lot, but boy, they are so rewarded in what they do every day. They're uh, wealthy in the ways that really really count. Obviously, I'm over the top for this kind of thing because it's so real and practical and optimistic and empowering. Give us your feedback. We're always looking for your feedback in this growing community of the Distraction Podcast. This is Dr. Ned Hallowell thanking you, thanking you for listening. Tell your friends about us, please. This is Dr. Ned Hallowell for Distraction. The episode you just heard was made possible by our sponsor, Landmark College, the college for students who learn differently, offering comprehensive supports for students with ADHD and other learning differences, both on campus and online. Learn more at lcdistraction.org.